why do the fitted values and the residuals, why are they orthogonal to one another? As in, why is there no correlation? You can see this here in the first line. So uh, the student wants to know why this covariance is, is zero. Now let's first think what that covariance actually means. Um, so we're gonna start here with a, um, just with a very simple sample of data points. So something like this. And then with OLS, we fit a line through these points. And so what are the fitted values here? Uh, the fitted values are nothing more than the regression line. So it's that. And so what that covariance and the absence of a covariance tells us is basically that the residuals, as in the vertical distance between the line and any of those points, is independent of the line itself. Okay, so whether you are very high up here somewhere or very low down there, um, it does, there is no correlation between where you are on that line and how wide the gap is between any of those points and the line itself. That's, that's all it, it tells us. The question is, where does this come from and how do we get to this? Well, how we get to this is, uh, we, we can talk about this. So let's first get into the covariance formula. So the covariance formula, I'm using here the sample, um, the sample equivalent or the sample formula, um, which is the following. So we first have the product between the two minus then one over n, so that's basically the mean of the residuals, and then times the mean of the of x. Sorry, ap apologies of the fitted values y i hat. Okay, if you wonder where that comes from, think about the formula uh, you've learned at some point in statistics for the covariance between x and y which is the expectation of x times y minus the expectation of x times the expectation of y. That's the equivalent of the formula that I've, that I've written down there in the first line that you can see here. So now um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna first look at this second part uh, down here. And uh, in particular, what we can single out here is what's here and that we know that when with the OLS estimator we know that the sum of residuals is zero. Where do we know that from? Well we know this from the following that we minimize the sum of squared residuals um, and we evaluate that minimum at the two parameters, the intercept and the slope. So that's, we minimize basically this. Okay, and so from that, uh, we know that the, the first order condition um, yields that the, um, so, so the first order condition from that problem yields the following. Um, it yields that that, that sum equals zero. And uh, what we have here um, is nothing more than the residual. Okay, so, so, so that we know. So when we go back to our covariance formula and look at this part here in the back, if this is zero, then this entire product down here is zero. Okay, so we can basically rewrite the covariance 
as the following. So the covariance of the fitted values with the residuals is only that first part, one over n times the sum of uh, y i hat hat times u i hat. Okay, so it's fitted values times the residuals. That's all the covariance is. That's what we've shown so far. Um, now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a slight detour and uh, we're going to look at the second first order condition. So this is what, what you see here is the first order condition um, by taking the first derivative um, of the of that minimization problem of the sum of squared residuals with respect to beta naught hat or beta naught. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the second first order condition, um, which is if you take the first derivative um, of the sum of squared residuals with respect to the slope, um, what you're getting is, and I will show this perhaps in another video at some point, um, is the following. So you have here you have that this sum equals zero. Now we can simplify this again a little bit because we know that that is the residual. So we know that the sum of the product of x and the residuals is zero. And basically what this means is that uh, x and the residuals, that they are uncorrelated. when we have an OLS estimator. Okay, that, that immediately follows from the OLS estimator. Right, so if we have that, um, that's a huge leap towards showing that this covariance here, all that's left here equals zero. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we can show this based on the, um, the, the following, that the fitted values are nothing more than the intercept plus the slope times x. So what this means is that the fitted values here on the left are a deterministic function of x. What does that mean? Well, it means that if I know your x, I know perfectly where your fitted value is, because that's just a regression line. So if, if, you, if your x is down here, I know that your fitted value must be here. And if your x is up here, I know that your fitted value must be there. So, so, so that we know. So it, intuitively, if x and the residuals are, are uncorrelated, it must mean, and, and x perfectly determines the fitted values, it must mean that the fitted values and uh, the, the residuals are also uncorrelated. Now we can obviously also show this. Um, so we need to change uh, this. Uh, we need to solve for x here. So we have x i equals the fitted values minus beta naught hat divided by beta one hat. And now we can, what we can do is we can take X and plug it into here. Um, and so that's what we're going to do now. So instead of having that sum that you can see up here, we're going to have now the sum over all I of this fraction times the residuals, and that is still zero, okay? Because we just plugged this in, this we plugged in for x. Now we can simplify this a little bit, um, and the way we do this is, is as follows. So we first, we can first pull one over beta one hat in front of the summation. Um, and so then we have the sum of 
y i hat and u i hat um, minus one over beta one hat times the sum of beta not hat times u i hat. And again, that has to equal zero. So uh, that first part, um, we're gonna that, that first part we're gonna leave. We're gonna have a closer look at at this part of the equation. So uh, what we can do here is um, we can pull beta naught hat because that's a parameter. So with a scalar, we can put it in front of the summation. So we have here um, one over beta one hat times beta naught hat uh, times the sum of the residuals. And we know that that has to equal zero. So the whole thing here equals zero. So in consequence, we can put this, we can cancel this out and let's write this zero down here. And then we can also multiply both sides here by beta one hat so that that fraction here in the front cancels out as well. And so we've shown now that those two, that that, that sum of those two things equals zero. Um, we can also multiply both sides by one over n and that's exactly what we want to show. Okay, so if that holds true, then what that must mean is that the covariance between the residuals and the fitted values must also be zero. And again, um, this may not be the most spectacular result you'll ever see, but what it says is again, that, uh, that basically wherever you are uh, here, whatever your, your X is, um, so wherever you are on the on this line, um, there is no correlation between being on a high point on the line and the size of the residuals or being on a low point on the line and the size of the residuals. These two are uncorrelated. And that follows from the way uh, the OLS estimator is constructed. 